My dad always said, buy once, cry once. And in this case of me chasing a good battery tester, he is definitely right. And you guys have actually warned me also. We started out with a top down. That's a few uh, videos back. I'll put a link in the description. This is the Ansel BST 500 and it's got a printer, it works good. I think I'm starting to get very picky as to what I want. We're gonna go through this guy top to bottom. Stick with us. First things first, this Ansel kind of gives me the old school vibe as to how it functions with the buttons and how you definitely get a solid feel as to when you're actually pressing the button. I took it out of the box and I'm like, yes, this is a good thing. I like it because long term, I feel like it'll hold up. I looked at the clamps and I said, you know, uh, they could be small, but we'll go with it and they're definitely strong, so we'll try it out. I can tell you after use, uh, this little cable here that goes between, which is maybe two feet, way too short. I need something that might even have six to eight feet. It'd sure be nice to have this inside the vehicle with me so I could look at gauges, look at what's going on while I'm like starting the vehicle or running different RPMs. That would be awesome. Beyond that, these are definitely too small. When you get into larger batteries, the clamps just are a pain in the ass, flat out. Uh, the screen on here is good, not good for a camera. I'm trying to get the right angle on it, but as far as looking at it, line of sight, it's great. Printer, it's finicky. The, to say that, that at the least, you have to sometimes take the paper out, make sure it's tight, put it back in. Other than that, it was pretty good. Let's go through some of the situations. So this is the same Chevy that we tested out a while back with the top down. I'm using the Ansel to go through and test the battery. I wanna go through this stuff really quick because there's some interesting things here. Uh, first, this battery came out as caution needs charging. It just came off the charger. This is a bad battery, guys, right out the bat. It should have caught it. The top down isn't catching it and this unit is not catching it. Uh, I think there's a charging issue on this that's making the battery bad, but that could be something that are all related together. It's really hard to say at this point in time. But if we look at the printout, and this printout took me a couple times to get because the paper wasn't overly tight on the inside, it's telling us that uh, we have a 12 volt battery, the result was caution needs charging. The current voltage that it's seen was 12.05 volts. Internal resistance, 6.71 milliohms. I believe that's the state of charge 25%, which doesn't, it's just saying it's low. State of health, 48%. Uh, it's calculating its cold cranking apps at 416. What I put in, it's a 600. So, and it gives you the date. And of course the date is incorrect here. I, I didn't set the date or time or put the VIN numbers in. I just wanted to print. It's interesting. I believe this is a bad battery flat out, but I wanted to do a startup load test. And that load test for starting is kind of going to show me a little bit more of what's happening with this battery. And although the battery says it's not fully charged, I know we're going to get a bad load test here, but again, it just came off a charger. So, the unit is blinking once we do the load test, telling us you know we have too low of a voltage on the bottom. I can't print this out. I wish I could, uh, but you just can't. So I wanted to go on and do the charging test with this, and this is where I really wish I had longer cables so I could see what's going on, not only with the multimeter, but with the battery tester also. And going through that, it's telling us that we have too high of a charge. It again is blinking. I again can't print that out. It's just saying, hey, too much is happening here and you know, you got issues. So I know that there's uh, probably an issue with that charging, although I wanna put a different battery in here and go through the same thing just to see if that solves some of the charging issues. Either way, this doesn't give me the warm and fuzzy on this again because I really think I got a bad battery. Um, just because it's constantly been on the charger and I'm still very low in voltage. 
The last battery tester that we used really struggled to work on this Ford for whatever reason, but this one had absolutely no issues at all. And I wanted to test out some of the cold cranking amps calculations based on what I put in for the standard of the battery. And I wanted to see what results I would get from putting in a little bit incorrect information since there's always could be user error. So here I put in 660 cold cranking amps when it's actually 750. It's telling me the result is great with a voltage of 12.82, an internal resistance of 4.59, it's saying it's state of charge 100%, state of health 85%, calculated cold cranking amps of 609, and it should be 660. That, that is great information with the wrong stuff put in, but I wanted to test out what its calculations would be and how things went. So what I did here is actually do the correct test. The result came back good, same voltage, 12.81 internal resistance 4.61, really close to being the same, state of charge 100%, state of health dropped to 65%, mostly because of this calculation. We still got the same 606 cold cranking amps, and you can see I put in 750. Now there is some variance in here between the uh, Fluke multimeter that I'm using and the Ansel, and I've seen that both in the Chevy and the Ford. Uh, seems that there's less voltage running through the Ansel and I'm getting more voltage on the Fluke and that could be because, a little bit because of the power situation of the Ansel. It's actually pulling power from the battery to run and maybe that is changing its internal calculations. It shouldn't, but that's the only thing I can come up with that it is. So here I also went through and did a starting test and went through and did the uh, the actual test for seeing how the charging system works and they all came out good but I can't print them. So interestingly enough now I have a Ford with a good battery rather than a Ford with a battery that needs replacement and it didn't make sense with the numbers last time either but in another sense I can also tell that when I'm starting up the Ford in the weather's getting cooler and cooler, it's starting slower and slower and slower. And when I had the plow on the truck yesterday, that was really pushing the battery. As you can see, the headlights dim as you turn things on. And I'm pretty sure that battery is gonna need to be replaced, although maybe it's still good for something, just not that truck. Where's this lead me? I, I'm going down a road where I really like the top down as far as how you went through and picked out different things. And the Ansel is just slightly confusing up until you grasp the fact that the highlighted portion up top is just telling you where you're at. And the place that's not highlighted on the bottom is where you're going. It makes very little sense. Uh, but at the same point, it works once you figure it out. The printer on this, less than reliable but it, it works as long as you consistently take out the reel and tighten that reel up. There's nothing in there holding it tight and as soon as that, that paper reel unwinds a little bit, it doesn't wanna work. I need longer cables. So for me, in this case, I need to spend more money and, and that sucks, but I wanna be happy with what I'm buying and maybe this will work for most people I'm missing the fact that I can't print out different situations. I'd really like to print out the fact that, hey, I have a charging issue or I have a start issue. This is what it started with at this point in time. Here's all my numbers. Here's the charging issue. Here's the numbers like I could with the top down. It told me everything and it gave me the information so I could sit down and maybe even do that test multiple times instead of getting out my camera, taking a picture and going through all that. Does it really matter? No. I want bigger cables and a longer cord is really what's happening here. And overall, I think I'm just gonna have to spend some more money to get something that's there. But if you're looking for something that just works, this definitely just works. And I think from pulling the multimeter out with it, it is close or at least close enough that you can trust it. So however this goes, I am super interested in hearing your comments. If you would pop back, look at the top down, 
pop back to this guy, look at this, leave me the comments on this video is what you think between both of those because I'm interested in hearing what you guys think. I know in the last video you guys gave me suggestions as to where to go and what to buy and I am going to do that and come back and see what happens there. As always, give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for your time, have a great day.